Modern Disney films have reinvented their own genre, there's really no other way to put it. The formula has changed completely, and a casualty of that change has been those banging Disney villain songs, because, well, we don't get Disney villains anymore. I've expressed my grief over this in the past, and it's no less potent now than it was then. Disney did villains in such a unique way, and it's sad to see them go. We've got some peppered in here and there over the last ten years or so, Mother Gothel, Hans, Yokai, Tamatoa... But these guys are very hit or miss, and most of them lack that flair that made the Renaissance bad guys so memorable, namely their flamboyant costumes, venomous narcissism, and extremely overt wickedness. But even if we can't do much more than cross our fingers for the future, we can always go back to those classic films we love so much, and appreciate the golden age of Disney villains and their songs of evil. And what more classic example of this could there possibly be than Scar's song, Be Prepared? It's a fantastic example of the visually intriguing and downright fun villain songs Disney used to make so regularly, and it's actually a bit more than that. Be Prepared is really a song that ties the entire narrative together and serves as a tool to rhyme the themes of the whole film. In this video, we'll take a look at everything to do with Be Prepared from its superficial side to the deeper themes explored therein. So let's delve right in. Now, Be Prepared is one of the most famous Disney songs for a reason. If you're looking at it purely on a surface level, which for right now we are, then you'll no doubt be pleased with how incredibly fluid, well-choreographed, and colorful the animation is. But for all of you who aren't in the know, or who might have forgotten after all these years, the entire point of this song is to establish that Scar has decided to kill his brother in order to become the king. Along the way, he makes a bunch of empty promises about what he'll do for his hyena army if they indeed choose to follow him. Put a pin in that for now, it'll be important later. A quick fun fact for you, by the way. Bet a lot of you think that's Jeremy Irons singing, don't you? Yes, my teeth and ambitions are bad. Be prepared. Well, you'd be half right. Jeremy Irons only sang about two-thirds of this song, but after the line where he says, The point that I must emphasize is, You won't get a sniff without me! He tore his throat up so bad that he could not finish the song, and so Jim Cummings, who plays Ed in the movie, had to do the rest for him. Oh, and also, I know that this is the most common Disney villain trivia maybe ever, but I feel like it's obligatory to mention it in a video about this song. The shot right here of all the hyenas marching is supposed to resemble the march of the Nazis in Berlin. But my favorite piece of trivia, not only about this song, but this entire film, and I absolutely have to share this with you, is that Jeremy Irons brought cigarettes with him to record his lines, and throughout the entire film, he was smoking while recording his lines. And that includes this very song. I am not kidding. He was smoking while he was singing. I don't know why, but that really cracks me up. So just remember the next time you watch this movie that every time Scar talks, Jeremy Irons had a cigarette in his mouth. In any case, and apologies for the stopgap, this song does a great job of standing out amongst several very similar villain songs, and it's honestly more impressive to me than most others, solely based on the fact that they had so little to work with in terms of the setting. I mean, when you really think about it, this whole song takes place in a boring, dark gray, empty cave with absolutely nothing in it. Most Disney villains get to have a surrounding with buildings and props to interact with, and in many cases they also get magical powers to add to the visual flair of the scene. But Scar not only gets none of those things, he doesn't even wear clothes. And yet it manages to be one of the most impressive, colorful, and interesting stages for an antagonist in any of these films. And I think the team that animated this scene deserves huge props for their incredible creativity in making what should have been the most boring visuals for a song ever into one of the most interesting and entertaining. But now I've delayed it enough, let's get into why and how this song ties into the rest of the film, and also how it managed to pretty drastically change my outlook on the whole movie upon revisiting it as an adult. This'll take a minute, but I swear I will tie this all back together at the end and it'll make sense what my point here is. So, as I mentioned beforehand, this whole song serves to inform the audience that Scar plans to kill his brother, so that he can become the king. Okay, so you might have heard me talk about this in past videos, but it's something I consider to be extremely important in any narrative that has an antagonist. It's what I like to call a rhyming character. This basically means that, in my opinion, it's important for a villain to mirror the protagonist in some way either be the complete opposite or a variation of the character and similar to them in some key ways. 
Frollo and Quasimodo are really good examples of this. They're both motivated by a love of Esmeralda, but they go about it in very, very different ways, and they have very different outlooks on their goals. In that way, Be Prepared absolutely showcases why Scar is a perfect reflection of Simba. I know you're probably not on board with me just yet, but I swear I'm going to go as in-depth as I possibly can to explain myself. Now, I know I just mentioned Hunchback of Notre Dame, but I'm going to do so again, because I think it's the best way to showcase what I'm talking about here. To those of you who've seen my video on Hellfire, you'll probably remember how I mentioned that Heaven's Light and Hellfire are basically the exact same song, but with two completely different intentions behind the narrative. Well, it's the same thing here, only with maybe not so different motivations for the characters. In this case, Be Prepared is really just the more sinister version of I Just Can't Wait to Be King. In fact, the two songs are back-to-back, -back, just like Heaven's Light and Hellfire. Because, and here's something even I wouldn't have believed for many, many years, for most of the plot, Simba is a horrible person. And indeed, up until the late stages of the film, he's very similar to Scar. And even though I'm going to touch on the parts of the film where he's a kid and not fully accountable for his actions, that's not the only part we'll be discussing. You might think I'm crazy, but the more and more that you listen to these two songs, the more that you'll see what I'm talking about. It's not just one or two similarities, either. After all, what is I Just Can't Wait to Be King really about? Well, it's right there in the title. I know he's not really considering what he's saying on a deeper level, but without realizing it, Simba is actively wishing for his father to die. Because, well, he can't take the throne until Mufasa's dead. But there's a lot more than just the motivation expressed in the song that ties the two together. There's a ton of subtleties throughout that inform both songs, and for example, uh, take a look at this couple of scenes side by side. I'm gonna be a mighty king, so enemies beware! Well, I've never seen a king or beast with quite so little hair. But we are talking kings and successions. <laughs> Even you can't be caught unaware. I'm rushing up, I'm looking down, I'm working on my God! <laughs> That's far rather an inspiring thing. You won't get a sniff without me! <laughs> Both Simba and Scar bully their underlings specifically by pushing them off a ledge in a pretty remarkably similar way, and they also both do it twice. And it's not just the motivation expressed in the songs or a couple visual similarities either. I mean, just listen to the lyrics here and how they express the exact same sentiment. Everybody look left. Everybody look right. Everywhere you look, I'm standing in the spotlight. The cage of denial is simply why I'll be king on disputed, respected, saluted, and seen for the wonder I am. But that's not all. I mean, look at the final shot of both songs side by side for a minute and tell me this wasn't intentional. Both of them are standing on a tower above everyone else in the same position, with all the animals beneath them. Both Scar and Simba throughout the majority of the film are very, very similar characters. And I believe that Be Prepared serves as a warning for what could have, and probably would have, happened to Simba if he hadn't corrected himself and become a better person. For the best example possible, let's just take the characters side by side. Um, what are Scar's flaws? Well, he's arrogant, he's petty, and above all, he's lazy. And what about Simba? Well, he's arrogant, he's petty, and he's lazy. There's significant evidence throughout the film that supports the idea that Simba would not have grown up to be a very good leader. Outside of his narcissistic behavior as a kid, his personality as an adult isn't much better. He's every bit as aloof and callous toward his position as he was when he was a kid. Okay, I have to go on a very brief tangent here, and please forgive me, but it absolutely has to be said. Because I know what you're saying. I can see it typing right now. It's not that he didn't care, it's that Simba didn't go back because he felt guilty for supposedly being responsible for his father's death. First of all, it's clear that he doesn't care either way because he never even tries to make any effort to remedy that, but second of all, the fact that's even true kind of proves the point that he's grossly incompetent. Like, he never figured it out. Even as a little kid, this bugged me about this movie so bad. How is it even conceivable that Simba never figured out that Scar was responsible for killing his father? I mean, to be fair, it's not like there were any subtle hints that this guy didn't have his best interests in mind. Hey, Uncle Scar. Will I like the surprise? Simba, it's to die for. Did he never question why Scar sent him into the elephant graveyard? 
Did he ever wonder why Scar sent him in the middle of a stampede? And on that note, did he ever wonder what the surprise actually was that Scar mentioned? Like, did he think Scar planned on giving him a birthday cake or something? And he just never got around to it? You wouldn't want to end up in another mess like you did with the hyenas. Simba abandons his responsibilities to live a life of loafing around while there are real problems that are only getting worse because of his absence. There's a lot of people who seem to think that Hakuna Matata is a happy song that's encouraging, but no, it's bad. It's horrible. Not that the song is bad, but you're not supposed to take the message and run with it. It's kind of like how that Don't Worry, Be Happy song has somehow tricked people into thinking that you're supposed to take the lyrics literally. Like, just look at this for a second and tell me you don't smell sarcasm. Ultimately, the main theme of The Lion King is personal responsibility. Simba's main challenge is getting over his laziness and unwillingness to take up the responsibility of ruling the country. And you know who else has the same problem? Scar. Scar's biggest problem is that he's so lazy and unwilling to perform his duties as king that the entire country falls to ruin because of his lethargic view towards his responsibility. Scar is definitely more of an overtly evil character, but ultimately they have the same weakness and share the same motive. Be Prepared is a great song because it showcases this theme, and also shows how these two characters are extremely similar, and how Simba probably would have ended up becoming exactly like Scar, with a little less malice. If Simba hadn't taken responsibility for himself and done what he needed to do, then ultimately he'd be the same lazy, selfish oaf that his nemesis was. Luckily though, Mufasa's ghost came to Simba and told him to go save the kingdom, which completely dismantles the entire narrative of his character. Because Mufasa told Simba that one day he wouldn't be around anymore to give him advice and he'd have to take care of himself. And then he completely undermines that by appearing to him as a ghost and giving him advice, which was the one thing he said he wouldn't be able to do. Oh well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know a lot of people enjoyed the first villain song dissection I did, so I figured I'd give you guys another one. In any case, I thought I'd share my thoughts on this song and the themes expressed in it that I don't feel like get a lot of attention. Uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you didn't like it, and subscribe for more. That's all for now.